The National Good Food Network is a key initiative of the Wallace Center that illustrates our market-based strategy with the goal of moving good, more good food to more people. The NGFN is structured as a network of networks, ensuring efficient flow of information and innovation from boots on the ground projects to the national level and back down to the grassroots level across the nation. The Wallace Center coordinates and supports the network. Our goals are to work with the growers to ensure that there is abundant supply to meet the high demand, collect and disseminate the best models, stories, methods, and outcomes, and to ensure that policymakers are informed about the wonderful successes our network and partners have had so that we can continue to increase support for regional healthy food. Let me tell you about some of our current projects designed to meet these goals. A regional food hub is a business or organization that actively manages the aggregation, distribution, and marketing of source-identified food products primarily from local and regional producers for the purpose of strengthening producer capacity and access to wholesale, retail, and institutional markets. The NGFN Food Hub Collaboration has been studying hubs and will soon out come out with a food hub resource guide published uh, by collaboration collaboration member, USDA Agricultural Marketing Service. The collaboration has established a growing community of practice where hub managers and supporters can share knowledge and best practices to accelerate this work. We will be providing technical assistance as well as communicating successes, positive impacts, and good models. The Field Guide to the New American Food Shed is a web-based tool along with a comprehensive outreach program intended to teach producers and those who might offer them credit about the wide range of business possibilities available in this new food marketplace. Learn more about this project by watching the archived November 2011 NGFN webinar. The NGFN has teamed up with Farm Credit to evaluate and improve educational instruments for financial training for growers. With an emphasis on working in the southern U.S. states, this program will create a toolkit of resources for those who train farmers on financial skills and business literacy. We have established a community practice of these trainers, and working with them, we will ensure that all, all of the critical financial skills are effectively passed on to their students. The project also includes identifying gaps and creating content to fill those gaps. The NGFN works with partners critical to the success and impact of, uh, of the NGFN's projects, including Marty Granser at Morse Marketing Connections, USDA Agricultural Marketing Service, Wellspring Management, Origins, and Farm Credit Council. Together with our national and regional partners, we're working on several projects in service of the goals of the NGFN. This math gives you a sense that we truly are a national network. And you should feel free to contact us at any time. Email us at ngfn.org. And here are a few other web and email addresses you should note. So enough for me. Let me introduce our esteemed panelists for the webinar today. Eleanor Starmer is Special Assistant to the Undersecretary for Marketing and Regu Regulatory Programs at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. She works closely with Deputy Secretary Kathleen Merrigan's office to coordinate the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative. She has worked on food, agriculture, and water, water policy issues for over a decade. Eleanor has a Master of Science in Agriculture Policy from the Friedman School at Tufts University and a Master of Arts in Development Economics from the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy. She originally hails from New Hampshire. And Wendy Wasserman is Communications Specialist with the USDA Agricultural Marketing Service with a focus on local food systems, farmers markets, food hubs, and healthy food access. Wendy has had over 20 years experience in communications, outreach, and public policy. She started her career on Capitol Hill as a legislative assistant for then-representative Pat Schroeder. Since then, she has also done public programming and communications with the Smithsonian Institution and Whole Foods Market. She has lived in Hawaii, uh, Louisiana, New York, Tokyo, J Japan, and most re recently, Iowa City, where she was the founding publisher of Edible Iowa River, River Valley. Wendy returned to D.C. about three years ago as a communications consultant with Fair Food Network, Farmers Market Coalition, and the Wallace Center, where she has also co-authored uh, the Community Food Enterprise Local, Local Success in the Marketplace. She has a B.A. and an M.A. in American Studies. Okay, take it away, Eleanor and Wendy. All right, thank you very much, Jeff, and um, welcome to everyone on the call. Since th this is Eleanor speaking, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative, as well as some of the new resources that we have just launched last week. And then I'll turn it over to Wendy to give a little bit more information about how we're getting the word out and um, what we hope you all can use these resources for. But since Jeff mentioned that I'm from New Hampshire, um, I thought I would start just by 
telling a little story about how I got interested in these issues. And that really happened through um, a relationship with my next door neighbors who were one of the first certified organic producers in the state. I grew up working on their farm. Um, and at the time um, when they began, they were both working off the farm as well. And they were mostly selling out of a farm stand into a couple local restaurants. In the past 15 years or so, they, um, in collaboration with a lot of other community members, developed the first farmer's market in our area. And since then, we've seen um, now a total of eight farmer's markets uh, popping up all throughout the region, which are extremely vibrant. There's been a lot more recognition of the local farms in the area, a lot more interest in purchasing their products. Um, both directly and through restaurants and, and grocery stores. And that has really become a huge source of, uh, a significant source of income for them, and it has allowed one of the, the two in the couple to um, work full time on the farm. Um, so that was really a, an eye opener for me in terms of the potential for these markets. But there is also so much more potential, I think, there. And um, it's also helped me recognize some of the challenges. I think it's, it's really a microcosm for what so many communities around the country are facing. So they don't have cold storage. There's really not a lot of um, accessible cold storage in the area, which makes it hard for farms and ranches to um, store things and sell them in bulk. There's no aggregation hub, um, so it's difficult for some of the smaller farmers to reach those larger institutional and other markets. Um, there's challenges with completing the food safety paperwork. Um, so there are quite a number of challenges, um, but it's also a real opportunity um, to develop a much stronger local and regional food system. This is, as I said, kind of shaped my understanding of some of the issues, and I know that they're not unique to my community. And that is one of the reasons that I'm so excited about the tool that we're going to be talking about today, which is both the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative here at USDA and a resource we just launched last week called the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food Compass. Um, and it's really something that I think will help folks from all along the value chain, and I know we have people from all along the chain represented here on the call, um, to figure out what's available from USDA to help develop these local and regional food systems. So as I said, I'll start walking through this. I'm then going to turn it over to Wendy. Um, I do need to say, though, that I feel a little awkward talking about this stuff um, with such an amazing group of people on the phone. I just got a glance at the, at the RSVP list. And there are so many people who um, are doing amazing work in the field, many of whom are profiled in this document or in other resources that we've put together. And I think those stories are some of the best resources we have about how things can, can work really well when we're talking about local and regional food systems. So just want to um, thank all of you for all the good work that you're doing. And also mention that we are joined on the phone, I believe, by a number of USDA employees from many of our rural development offices out in the states. Um, Farm Service Agency has representation on the call, Food and Nutrition Service, and the Economic Research Service. So these are the folks who know these programs best. And I encourage you, after this is all over, to reach out to them. Um, we're going to provide a very broad overview. So please do connect with the USDA offices in your states and counties um, to learn more about what's available. So with that caveat, I will um, kick it off. I want to start um, before I talk. Oh, and I've gone too fast. There we go. Um, before I talk about the compass, which is the document and map that we introduced last week, I want to just take a step back and talk a little bit about the initiative. Um, I believe on the phone we have Luke Knowles, who helped develop and spearhead this initiative since it, its inception in 2009. So again, he's the expert. Um, but I'm going to try to do the best I can do in describing it. Um, the 2008 Farm Bill really created a number of new opportunities to promote local and regional food systems. So just a few examples in Rural Development's Business and Industry Loan Program. Um, Congress in the 08 Farm Bill established a 5% set aside for those loans um, to provide local and regional food enterprises um, with loans or loan guarantees. We saw the Farmers Market Promotion Program have its funding dramatically increased. Um, the Value Added Producer Grant, which is another rural development program, um, was expanded to um, have specific funds available for small and mid-sized farms, socially disadvantaged farmers, and also um, local and regional food producers. So there are a lot of opportunities that were created um, in that bill. Um, there's also, I think, just a general real upswing in interest in opportunities like farm to institution, 
EBT at farmers markets, the development of food hubs, and we're seeing a huge um, and growing demand as well um, on the consumer side. So we here at USDA knew this was important. USDA has a role to play in being involved in this work. Um, but a lot of these issues touch on more than one agency. And there is a need for coordination and a space to highlight these resources. Um, it may seem like that wouldn't be that difficult, but when you're talking about um, an entity like USDA with a $150 billion budget and 100,000 employees or more, um, it's not always as easy as you'd think for people to, to cross the agency barriers and talk to each other. Um, and so we created the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative to help do that. It's not a program. It doesn't have its own dedicated funding, and it doesn't have full-time staff. But what it does is provide a space for folks from all of the 17 agencies here at USDA to come together in a task force, which meets on a regular basis to discuss the programs that we're working on related to local and regional foods, um, coordinate and share information. We created subcommittees of the task force uh, to focus on specific aspects of the issue, so local meat, food hubs, et cetera. Um, and that has really allowed us to, to collaborate and make things happen um, more efficiently and connect, as we say, the puzzle pieces of all these different agencies at USDA that work on different aspects of a similar issue. One example I can provide for kind of what we mean by connecting the puzzle pieces is um, when food stamps uh, converted from coupons to electronic benefits, or EBT, electronic benefit transfer, farmers markets faced a lot of challenges because many of them didn't have um, phone lines or electricity or the types of infrastructure you need to process those benefits. So um, FNS, the Food Nutrition Service, was able under Know Your Farmer to coordinate with the Ag Marketing Service and with Rural Development to address this issue. So FNS was able to streamline the requirements for being a certified vendor to accept EBT. And then AMS and Rural Development worked within their mandates to fund wireless EBT technology for the markets. Um, and FNS and AMS actually coordinated on a handbook for farmers market managers on how to do this. So that was a great example of how it brings folks together. The results have been incredible. Just between 2010 and 2011, we saw over 50% increase in the number of markets that accept EBT. Um, so that's just an example of how, how Know Your Farmer has worked. Um, one of the things that we did under the initiative, and again, Luke was really the, the master of this, because um, this was before my time, was to develop a website that really creates kind of a one-stop shop for people who are looking for an entry point into all that USDA has to offer in terms of support for local and regional food systems. And I'm going to look, um, you can only see half of the page here, we'll, we'll get online in a second and look at it. Um, more closely. But this website, and which also has a blog and other resources, has been a real tool to get that information out. Um, just last week, we released what we call the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food Compass. And it's both a document, a sort of narrative, as well as an interactive map. And we're going to get online in a moment and look at both of them. This is really an attempt to show stories of people throughout the country who are putting USDA resources to work. So it's, it's both a compendium of what is out there in terms of, of what's available from USDA, and also hopefully a source of inspiration and ideas for folks who are looking to use these resources in their own communities can actually learn from other communities and, and see what they've done. And I think there's something in it really for everyone. Um, we organized the compass into seven themes. They're listed here. We have infrastructure, which is everything from um, high tunnels on farms to production infrastructure to you know processing, distribution, retail infrastructure, local meat and poultry, um, stewardship, which is about you know environmental conservation issues, farm to institution, careers in agriculture, which covers beginning farmers as well as other um, you know ag in the classroom and other uh, efforts to help kids get involved in agriculture at any level, um, on the farm or off, healthy food access, and then local food knowledge, which is about re research and data. What has USDA been up to um, in terms of trying to understand local and regional markets better and share that information with the public, as well as fund um, information out in the, or research out in the field. So there's definitely something in here for everyone. Um, and this is a, actually a word map that we created um, out of what's in the compass. Um, you can see whether you're a beginning producer looking for um, help 
developing a business plan or an entrepreneur who wants to develop a processing facility or a farmer's market manager um, looking to learn from other successful markets, there are descriptions of these resources and how people are putting them to work. So I'm going to walk you through these resources really quickly um, to help you get a sense of what's in here and how to navigate it. And then I hope you will take some time to explore it yourself. Um, actually, Jeff, if we can go back to the page before this. No, sorry, stay on the website. But if you scroll down below the navigation bar, there you'll see the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food logo right at the very bottom. Yep, if you can click on that. Perfect. So this is um, the homepage for the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative. And I imagine many of you may have been on it. Um, if you haven't, the easiest way to find it is if you go to USDA.gov, which is the homepage for USDA, you'll see this icon with either a tomato or a pepper. You'll have to decide which one you think it is. Uh, in, the left, in the lower right-hand corner, and you can click on that. It'll take you here. But I did just want to quickly show you um, the grants, loans, and support page here, which is, I, I hope, a really good source of information for all of you about the types of resources that we have uh, related to local and regional food systems specifically. So you'll see that there are, um, there are, I believe, eight different agencies listed here, 27 programs. This is not the full spectrum of what USDA has available on local and regional foods, but these are kind of the top programs that the task force identified um, when we started out this process. Um, I'll just show you, for example, if we click on uh, the Farm Service Agency Farm Loan Programs, each of these has a description of what the, uh, um, the grant or loan or loan guarantee program is, as well as who's eligible to apply for it. A real life example of someone working on local and regional food systems who was able to use these resources. And then down here where it says get more information, you'll see there's um, a direct link to the FSA website to help you find how to apply and how to link with your local office as well. So these are the kinds of resources that we have um, available on this page. Also, because I imagine there are a number of folks on the phone who are interested in urban agriculture, I just wanted to point out at the very bottom of this page, we have a memo here on USDA resources for urban ag. So that um, will hopefully help you also see how you can leverage those resources for what you're doing. So. Let me get back to the home page. And I would like to then show you how we get into the Compass. So right here, you've got the link to the Compass website. And you'll see we have um, a wonderful welcome video with the secretary and the deputy here. Um, as well as down below that, you can navigate, you can download the entire document. Um, and you can also navigate to our interactive map, which I'm going to show you in just a second. But here on the left, you've got um, the navigation bar, which shows all of the different themes and sections that we have in the compass. Um, and from each of those sections, you can also navigate to um, that section of the report to read the full thing. So at this point, I think we will uh, open the compass document. And I'll just take you through. And Jeff, is that something you can do? There we go. Great. This document, um, when you download it, it'll download as a PDF. And we don't actually give you a lot of information on the website itself because we really wanted people to dive into the document, to see the stories, to look at the videos, to, um, to see the pictures. But it's a very interactive document. And I'll just um, navigate a little bit through the infrastructure section to give you a sense of what, what all's in here. Um, so for local food infrastructure, You'll see um, a number of links throughout that will take you to some of the resources um, that are mentioned in here and the stories, the resources that folks used. We've got a number of videos as well that you can watch to learn more. Um, we have um, pictures and stories. And in every case where we talk about the story, we also give you a link back to the program that funded that particular producer or business. So you can link back and see the types of resources that they were able to leverage and, and whether that would work for you as well. Um, so I do encourage you to look through it. There's, as I said, these seven sections, something in it for everyone. Um, and it's, I hope, a, a really great compendium of what's out there. I'm going to take us now back to the website. 
um, to show you the map, which is a really exciting effort. It's an attempt on our part, I think, to be more transparent, to share information about the grants and loans that we've invested in throughout the country. And it, what it does is it covers, um, for as much data as we could gather, the projects that USDA has funded around the country since 2009 related to local and regional food systems. So um, it's the first time we've ever put this information out. Um, and it's an opportunity for you to look at what other people are doing around the country and, again, see if that's something that could work for you. Now up here in the data tab, um, you can see you can organize the dots on the map by the theme and the compass. So if you're interested in looking at local meat projects, for example, you can organize it by theme. You can organize it by recipient type, which is are you a nonprofit, are you a producer, um, are you a business, and, and that'll also help you understand who's eligible for which program. Or you can organize it by the USDA program that funded it. Um, so I'm going to keep it on the compass theme, and I'm going to zoom in here to show you some uh, information. Now let's see. I haven't done this before on the webinar system, so hopefully we will do it without a hitch. But let's see, I will focus in here on Ohio. Um, so you'll see that there are, um, that the state is shaded, and that's another layer of data that we have available. Um, we are showing here the number of WIC Farmers Market Nutrition Program recipients, uh, the number of farmers that participated in programs to accept, um, this is the Women, Infants, and Children Farmers Market Nutrition Program, as well as the number of markets and farm stands that, um, that accept WIC. We also have a layer for the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program, so that can help you see opportunities um, in your state as well. Um, we've also got, if you click on the dots, um, information about all of the projects. So I wanted to focus on this because I believe we have someone from ACENET on the phone. Um, this is a project in um, Athens, Ohio that was funded to increase the production and promotion of, um, of local food products. And it gives you the information about where the grant came from, um, how much money it was for, what program it was. And if we do have a link to more information, that link is included in this box as well. So this is just an example of the type of information you can find um, through these pr programs. The other thing that we do have available here, and you do have to navigate a little bit more closely in order to see it, is the high tunnels. This is a, a Natural Resources Conservation Service project that was begun under the Know Your Farmer initiative just a few years ago. And it funds the construction of high tunnels, or hoop houses as some folks know them, um, which are essentially temporary greenhouses that you can install on your farm. Um, they're wonderful for local food producers because they help to extend the growing season. So you can put plants in earlier. You can harvest later. It really allows you to access um, farmers markets and other um, opportunities for sale later into the year. And this shading, the green shading, if you click on a place where there's a shade, it'll tell you how many high tunnels are in that, that zip code area or county area. So again, it's just another way to learn a little bit more about what producers in your area are doing. If you're a producer and you're interested in seeing a high tunnel, you can get a sense of how many folks are in here. Um, it won't tell you the exact address. We don't have that information, but it will tell you the density um, by zip code. So again, this is another source of, um, of good information in terms of what's happening locally. The last thing I'll mention is um, that we do have links to the FSA state offices here. Oops, that didn't work, though. Um, and this was, I'll try it again. Here we go. So here in Indiana, um, it just gives you a little bit of information about the loans that FSA makes to producers, including to those who are selling into local and regional markets. And in this case for Indiana, we don't have, or we're still gathering examples, but for many of the states, I think 20 out of the 50, when you open this box, it'll give you three examples of local food producers who um, were successful in getting an FSA loan um, either for purchasing farmland or to help with their operation in some way. And again, it's not the full spectrum of FSA support for local and regional producers, but it will give you a sense of um, how local producers are using these resources and that they're available. Um, the map is going to be continuously updated with new data. It's certainly not perfect at this point. There's um, projects that we missed. There are projects that have just been announced that we still haven't put on here. 
We're definitely hoping to add the locations of other offices, um, Rural Development, Natural Resources Conservation Service, and some of the local FSA offices, um, as well as others. So please do check back regularly um, to get more information. But we're really excited about this as the beginning of a resource that we hope will, will help uh, folks understand. And the is there, is, sorry, mm -hmm. Eleanor, there, there's a question. Is, is there some way that um, someone has a project that is not showing up on the map that, to alert you of that? Yeah, actually, and we can, we can definitely talk about that more. But um, if it's a project that USDA has supported over the last couple years related to local foods and it's not on here, then it's our error. And so um, at the end of the presentation, we'll have the USDA um, Know Your Farmer email address and you can send us a note about that and we'll make sure to fix it. Um, at this point, the map does not include information for projects that USDA hasn't funded. So um, one of the things we're hoping actually, and this is a good segue to my next point, is that people will take this data and use it maybe to create maps of their own community where they layer on the locations of other projects that USDA didn't have anything to do with but that are really great examples of local regional food projects. So up here where it um, above the map where you see the glossary descriptions, if you click here, it will take you to a place where you can actually download Excel files with all of this data in it. And so you'll see um, there's a, a number of different layers. We've got the farmer's market nutrition, we have the seasonal high tunnels, and then we have the projects. Um, I will just shift over here to the Excel spreadsheet to show you what it looks like when you download it. And I know it's a, it's a whole mess of words here, but um, just to give you a sense, you'll get the project title, the program that funded it, the year, um, who received it, you know, and more information about what they're doing, as well as, if we've got it, a link to the project. So this is a way, we hope, in which you know, web developers can take this information and create maps for their own communities and use it in other ways, too. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Wendy. Um, I do just want to say one thing, which is, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is an incredible tool, I hope, to help everyone navigate USDA's resources. And we hope you'll visit the local office to learn more about it. Um, but we also saw this as an opportunity to tell the story of some of the really incredible work that's happening out in the, out in the field and all of the work that you are doing in your own communities. So I hope you'll leverage this opportunity um, to find ways to tell your story. and. Um, and also explore the work that's taking place in other, in other areas. And Wendy's going to talk a little bit more about that. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, this is Wendy Wasserman at the USDA. And um, thank you, Eleanor. That was an amazing tour through the Compass. We've spent a lot of time with it recently. And it's always good to get another walk through, because every time I look at it, I find something new and exciting and inspirational. Um, so it's this is all to say that once is never enough when it comes to this kind of material. So uh, if we can, if we can go to the next slide. Eleanor has control of the slides over here. The USDA Compass, um, the Know Your Farmer Compass, is actually a new way to present information that we actually had already. Uh, we knew about all these different programs. We knew these programs were being funded. We, we knew these projects were being funded. Um, but it was a new way to present this information. And because it was a new way to present this information, we presented it in a new way. Um, it's a completely online document. And when we announced it on uh, February 29th, as Deputy Secretary Morgan likes to say, the unday, um, we did it with a webinar. This is a new experience for the Deputy and the Secretary. You can see the two of them there. And uh, they did basically what Eleanor just did. They walked through the compass, the resources, they introduced it to the public, and then they started taking uh, questions as they were coming through Twitter. Um, and the reason we did that is that another really, really important part of the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative is this national conversation piece. What we're hoping to do and what a lot of you do all day, every day, and we want to help um, amplify in a way is really engaging in a national conversation about our local and regional food systems. Who's working on it? Who's doing stuff? What does it mean to communities? What are the stories? It's um, 
cultivating? Uh, who are the faces in national, in local and regional food systems? What are the outstanding projects? Um, where are things blossoming? Where are things struggling? Where are the challenges? Where are the successes? Where are the opportunities? Um, so that's why we did this webinar format. And um, you can see on the bottom left of your screen the hot link to the webinar. It was about 23 minutes, and we launched it on the 29th. Um, and and having both the deputy and the secretary there demonstrates that this is coming from the very highest level of USDA. This is USDA's commitment to continuing local and regional food systems, and it's something that the secretary um, is really, really dedicated to, as well as the deputy. Let's go on to the next one. As part of this national conversation, it didn't stop on the 29th. We could continue to collect all these um, different questions and information and, and uh, responses and reactions to the compass that were coming in mostly over Twitter. And we hosted what we were calling a virtual conversation on March 5th, this past Monday, at the White House. The White House was very, very kind enough to invite us over. And there you see the deputy. And to her right, turning around and looking at the compass, is uh, John Carson, who's the director of community engagement at the White House. He's the guy who runs all those really cool um, uh, social networking things that the president does. And um, they do a lot of what they call tweet ups over there. And this is exactly what this is. We uh, came over there. We, we walked through the compass. We invited 60 people to join us. There are some of the backs of their heads. In fact, I think Jeff was there. Um, and some other people who might have even been on the phone were there as well. And we did exactly what we just did with you. We walked through the compass. We walked through the map. And we started taking more and more questions to, um, again, stimulate this national conversation. Uh, you can see on the right, um, a lot of this conversation was conducted over Twitter. Again, this is a relatively, it's not, a, Twitter's not a new platform, but it's a new platform for USDA to use so aggressively um, and so determinatively to capture lots of uh, the information that people were talking about. Um, this is just a really, really brief sampling um, of some of the tweets that were going on during this national conversation. You can see that they all use this hashtag called uh, KYF2. And we're continuing to watch Twitter um, to see the kind of reaction that's coming in. Um, we, John Carson, when he was there, he's done about 13, 14, 15 of these kinds of events since uh, during the course of this administration. You've probably heard about some of them. And he <laughs> made the comment that this was one of the most active uh, types of events that he's seen, both with the energy in the room and um, the activity that was happening online at the same time. And that, to us, demonstrates that this national conversation piece is just as important as uh, showing the resources and the commitment that USDA um, has to local and regional food. So let's go on to the next slide. So the question that we're getting a lot is, what's next? We, the USDA, set up the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative. We wrote and developed the compass. We made the map. We've got the files. Now what? Um, and it's a great question. Uh, we're going to continue to keep on working on the blog. Um, you can see this is, I mean, we've even changed it since we took this screenshot. We've uploaded a couple of more things. We've changed the pictures. Um, and we're going to keep on cultivating stories and telling stories. And I, I really, really urge everyone to keep an eye on the blog. There's a way through the USDA website to sign up for an RSS feed for it uh, on the site, too. There's a place to do it. Um, and this is going to be sort of a, a, a dedicated collection of USDA stories about local and regional food systems. And a lot of the people on the phone, I, I know that you have stories to tell. And um, and with USDA, you know, if there's some kind of USDA interface, we'd be delighted to tell them and also talk about different opportunities um, that are out there. Um, you can see on the right, this is one of the case studies that's in the narrative part of the compass that Eleanor was walking through. And these two will continue to be updated. Um, they're just really rich, vibrant, exciting stories filled with pictures um, and talking about the impact that local and regional food systems and different projects have had um, in different communities around the country. Um, and again, I, I hope you look through the compass to see if you're in there. You might be in there. Um, or someone you know might be in there. And that's really what this thing is, is about um, a sense of inspiration. We're also going to be working on the map, uh, the map that you saw before. We're, we're going to be continuing to up low data sets to it. We're calling it context data, which is a fancy word for data sets that we hold, USDA holds, 
um, but that might not be directly related to projects that we fund. A perfect, perfect example of that is the farmer's market directory, which I think probably a lot of you are very familiar with, or at least I hope you are. Um, this is a directory of farmer's markets that the USDA keeps. This is the one that shows over 7,100 farmers markets across the country. Um, and not all of them might be funded by USDA, but all of them are very, very, very important outlets for local and regional food systems and places where people, frankly, can go know their farmer and know their food, in some ways very much the public face of agriculture. Um, so that data set will be uploaded to the map as well the data set for food hubs. Um, there are now close to 170 of those. Those will go up. Um, and a bunch of other data sets that we're scrubbing through the USDA to find that will be of relevance and of interest. Um, the task force will continue to meet. Um, the task force, as Eleanor mentioned, is representation from all of USDA. The commitment to um, forging those partnerships continues, and um, they will continue to do their work and, and to develop more opportunities for USDA to work efficiently and effectively on local and regional food systems, all within our current existing um, congressional authorities. Um, and also, one of the things that uh, the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative does and the COMPASS does is it talks about other opportunities that might not be through USDA. I mean, we, we've seen a lot of local food um, examples and projects that are funded by other uh, agencies and departments. A perfect example that I'm thinking of is um, the Treasury Department, which runs um, a CDFI banking program. And uh, one of the people who was with us at the White House has been used uh, the USDA, Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative to find out about those programs too. So this is, again, continues to be a real um, opportunity to find out what we're doing, but find out what's really available. Let's go on to the next slide. So now we, um, oh, we're trying to go on to the next slide, sorry. Um, okay, so so what uh, so what's happening now? Well, one of the things that you know we're so delighted about being on this call with you all today is, like we said at the beginning, to um, familiarize you with this resource, to show you what's there, to show you how your work might fit in, and also to get the word out that these resources exist, that USDA is committed to this work, that we want to continue to hear from people and um, hear about things that we might have missed or hear about questions that you have or hear about um, opportunities or or excitement or challenges or even accomplishments that you've made in local and regional food systems. This is the really exciting stuff. Um, on the left of your screen, you can see a one page that we've developed that just quickly summarizes the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food Compass, what it does, what's in there. Um, we're <laughs> We're personally very excited that we have a QR code at the bottom on the left there. That's, again, new for the USDA, kind of old hat, I know, for some folks in the private sector. But for us, we're very excited about it. Um, and this is something that's available just you know, as a quick tip reference if you happen to be out and about at conferences or meetings or you know, just as a quick reference. The conversation will continue on Twitter. We're continuing to mine Twitter and watch Twitter for this hashtag, KYF2. Um, for those on Twitter, either personally or your organizations, or you know, if you're at conferences or, or in other kinds of meetings where local and regional food systems come up, that's a really quick and easy place um, to talk about it so, and to make sure that we're watching and seeing. And so this is a place, again, where we're going to be mining for stories and mining for activities and looking for um, questions and looking for actually suggestions about the next places we can go. Um, at the bottom there is the email, the Know Your Farmer email. As Eleanor mentioned, this is, a, again, another place to ask questions, either about the map, about the compass, about KYF, about USDA, any of those things. That's a really, really easy place to start. But here's my challenge for you all. Um, the, the compass talks about what we have done so far. Um, and now the question is where we're going to go, as I talked about before, how we're going to engage people in this, how we want people to read this. We know about 15 or 16,000 people have already played with the map, have already looked at the narrative, have already um, engaged in that website. But 
time to get more. Um, time to figure out how you, how this can be of value to your work. This is really our goal. It's very easy to say that USDA is not doing work in this um, field in local and regional food systems, and actually this proves the opposite. And with 2,000 projects on the map and this really, really rich narrative, there's a place for everybody, and we want to make sure that there's a place there for you. So um, with that, I think we're going to move on to questions. Oh. Again, this is just a reminder. Oh, I love these photographs. Um, this is just a reminder, again, to look at the compass and find, find your community in it. On the top left is Detroit. Underneath it is Brattleboro, Vermont. Um, you can see in the middle there, I think that's Minnesota. Um, we've got Florida and Texas and Nevada. I mean, every there's, I can guarantee there's something in your neighborhood if you're not already there. Um, and again, this is how to find us. So, with that. All right. Well, this is Jeff again. I'm, I'm here to ask uh, some questions. There are a, a, a very large number of fantastic questions. Please keep them coming. Uh, we will try to hit as many as we possibly can within time limits. Uh, so let me uh, start out with a, a, a quick one. One question is, can the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food tagline be used in marketing materials, or is it restricted to USDA use only? Um, the answer is yes, it can be used. The Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food um, language is not trademarked. We want people to use it, um, just with the knowledge that you know it doesn't imply any kind of endorsement, um, but it is it is available for your use. Great. Um, good to know. Um, how does the USDA collect all this information and these stories about local and regional food systems? I will take that one. Um, there's a number of different mechanisms that we're using, and we are trying to sort of streamline the process as we've gotten into it and learned a lot from the exercise of creating the map. But in terms of the stories, we are forwarded them from our local USDA offices throughout the country. Sometimes we'll have folks who are in town who come to meet with us. Um, they, they know of the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative and the task force and express interest, and so we'll set up meetings to hear a little bit more about what they're doing. Um, these are all ways that we generate the stories that we that we put on the blogs. And a lot of the stories for the blog, um, and, and many of them are actually cross-posted to the USDA blog, which gets a lot of traffic. Many of these stories are ones that are written by our field offices, um, also, often in collaboration with the folks working on the project. So if you think you've got a great story and you're interested in having it told, definitely check in with the um, program manager for the program that you receive funding through and see if they'd be willing to highlight it for us. Um, we're always open to that. You can also send an email to knowyourfarmer at usda.gov, and that'll be another way for us to know that you're out there, that you're interested in having your story told, and hopefully we can coordinate with the program manager to, to get more information on that. Um, in terms of the map and the data, this was definitely a labor of love, and um, Luke Knowles, who I mentioned at the beginning, who I think is now with us on the call, um, really spearheaded this process long before I was here. But it involved going out to all of the agencies that work on these 27 programs that the task force initially identified and asking them to give us the data for the programs, um, which Luke then, with the help of many others, sorted through to identify the local and regional food projects. And that then allowed us to create the map. Because it was such a long process and because we were working with data that had been compiled in a lot of different ways depending on the program, um, it's not a perfect map at this point. So as I said, if your project is missing and you think it should be on there, please do let us know. Um, and we will be trying to streamline the process going forward as we're gathering and uploading more data. And again, letting you know is sending an email to knowyourfarmer at usda.gov? Yep, that's the best way to reach us. And we do check that email regularly, so it's not going to get lost. In fact, it goes straight to me, so I'll <laughs> look out for it. Great. Um, Kathleen asks uh, where she can search for farmer's market on the compass. So, okay, it's a, it's a great question. So the answer is... Um, Right now, as I was mentioning before, the USDA Farmers Market Directory is part of what we're calling Phase 2. So right now, actually, the best place to look for farmers markets um, is through the AMS 
um, website, and Jeff, I can give you that link later to distribute. I believe it's actually USDA.gov. Um, I'll get it. Don't worry about farmers it. Markets, but he can get it for you. Um, soon that database will be uh, layered onto the Compass map, and that will be a searchable database of farmers markets that are open and out there. Um, I will say that that database is completely self-reported. It's based on farmers markets and managers themselves. Uh, it, giving their information to USDA, so it's only as good as the participation. But that being said, uh, that is the database that we use to count farmers markets. So um, I know AMS soon, probably later in the spring, will be doing a call out for 2012 information. And if you're a farmers market manager, keep an eye out for that because it's really important to be on that list. There um, also people were wondering about finding food hubs on the map. Um, and also state-specific data. So food hubs, I'm sure, Jeff, you could even answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> food hubs, uh, again, is part of our phase two plan. Uh, we're still assembling our list of food hubs, also coming out of AMS. Um, I know uh, the NGFN has done a series of uh, webinars on food hubs, and as Jeff mentioned in the beginning, is a partner in the National Food Hub Collaboration. Um, so they're finishing up their list of food hubs, and uh, ironically enough, the, the question is very pertinent because next week, I believe, they're also coming out with what they're calling um, a distribution study on six or seven um, distribution models throughout the country, some of which are food hubs. Um, and that'll be coming out next week, and then later in the spring, uh, the USDA will be coming out with a guide for food hub development, and that will also have the list. Two two different questions uh, about um, getting the word out. Um, we have a question from Laura about uh, how it's being communicated, how this information is being communicated with uh, extension and land grant representatives. Uh, and then uh, we have a question from Darlene about um, how it's being shared with people who don't have high-speed internet connections. Uh, okay, I'll do the first one first and the second one second. Um, this is Wendy again. Uh, so uh, interaction with Extension and Land-Grant Universities, the answer is yes. We have been combing through all of USDA's partners and field offices and uh, cooperators and everybody you can think of to really alert them about the compass. So if you are an extension officer and you're on this call and this is the first time you've heard about the compass, it means that we failed our job. If this is not the first time, that means we actually might have done one thing right, so that's a good thing. Um, but we are working through extension and we are working through um, everything just to start pushing out the word. We've probably been on more listservs than I can think of and I know that a lot of um, in fact, all the USDA senior leadership has been briefed on this and we'll be starting to talk about it as they make their rounds and their visits. That one pager that we talked about at the end that's also going out and has actually went out to all field offices all um, that are out there and um, that's available for their ears too. And for some reason that, again, you are in a field office, you're in extension, you're in a land grant university or wherever, and you haven't received that information, write to us, tell us, we will hook you up immediately. We want to make sure that you are well versed. Um, to answer your second question, for the those who are not without, um, who who have limited broadband access, it's a great question, and it's and it's something that the first question dovetails with perfectly. That's again one of the reasons why it's so important that that folks on the ground know about this. Um, and that's why while we've been doing a lot of work, again, on Twitter and using social media platforms, we've also been doing a lot of work um, about uh, getting people to write about this and, and to having it included in their newsletters, especially with a very specific personal slant if you're in the compass or if you've been funded by USDA programs or if you know, someone in your organization has if you're a constituent-based organization. And we encourage you to do that, too. Um, this isn't just the USDA speaking about itself. This is not just us tooting our horn. This is not just us um, trying to be the big kids on the block. What this is really about is this is about celebrating um, the, the country's development of local and regional food systems. And I would say that every single person who is on the phone and who is in the compass has a piece to play in getting that word out. That's very inspiring, Wendy. That's that's wonderful. 
Jackie asks a specific question. She says, we are in the process of building a business plan for a nonprofit food center of excellence that will hopefully support a small processing center and a food hub. What studies do you have that can validate a project of this nature? Again, Jeff, I'm almost willing to bounce that one right back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this goes right back to the work that AMS, um, the Agriculture Marketing Service through USDA is doing with Wallace Center and um, others on food hub development. Again, I would take a look at that website that Jeff flashed up at the screen at the beginning that has a lot of information about food hubs. And um, Jeff can also follow up with the uh, website that the USDA has, which in fact is mentioned in the compass. And I would um, encourage the person who asked the question to look at the infrastructure section in the compass. And that will give them a lot of ways to think about um, how to form their business, uh, other businesses that are out there that might be similarly inspiring, um, other ways to integrate processing into food hub work or whatever and with a bounty of different um, resources in there as well. Um, speaking of other resources, um, Cheryl asks if uh, she can take uh, clips from the, the videos and redistribute them. Yes, absolutely. They're all, um, all of the videos that we featured are um, public information. They're all USDA videos that were developed, so they are absolutely for public use. This is Wendy again, and I just want to throw in there that we, like I said, Eleanor said, we, we want you to do this. We encourage you to do this. This is our gift to you. Please use it. Um, the only thing we ask is that you just tell us about it so we can keep track, so we can make sure that, frankly, the deputy knows and the secretary knows and people around here know how this is being used because that's the measure of success. Um, and, and, you know, th there was another question about other materials with a specific emphasis on farmers, um, materials for farmers market managers. Um, s same goes for that, I, I would assume. Absolutely. I mean, again, this compass is public use. It's, it's available for you. Take it, use it, um, adapt it how you see fit. And um, for if you're a farmer's market manager looking for information about farmer's market managing, again, I would uh, encourage you to read through it, and you'll find links there to all sorts of other resources at USDA. I'll just add, this is Eleanor, um, Wendy mentioned earlier that, or actually, no, I mentioned earlier, that um, one of the things that we were able to develop through the collaboration that happens under Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food was a specific handbook for farmers market managers who are interested, oh, Wendy just told me she wrote it, um, <laughs> who are interested in implementing electronic benefits transfer at the market. So that's one of many resources that are available um, through, through, and all of these are compiled in, in the compass. Um, th does the USDA consider community gardens as part of Know Your Farm or Know Your Food? Yes, we absolutely do, and I'm glad um, that you asked that question. We have a number of um, USDA initiatives, and again, Know Your Farmer as an initiative that really pulls together many things that already existed here in the department, but also has catalyzed some new efforts. Um, we've helped to publicize some of the some of the resources that USDA has related to gardens. Um, we have the People's Garden Program. Um, this was launched by the Secretary a few years ago. Um, we developed our own People's Garden here at the, at the department in Washington and then asked USDA employees to develop um, their own gardens as well as to reach out to community partners. At this point, we have thousands of People's Gardens around the country and there is a map. Um, again, you can find a link to it both on the initiative website and through the Compass. Um, to show where all those gardens are, and you can register your garden on that website as well. Um, we think gardens are an incredibly important aspect of this work for a few reasons. Um, one is that it's a way for kids who may not have exposure to agriculture um, otherwise to learn a little bit more about what goes into producing food. So Wendy mentioned that um, one, of the, one of the priorities for the initiative in addition to promoting the work and publicizing the work we do on local and regional food to support that work, um, is to catalyze this national conversation about where does our food come from, who grows it, um, help people understand a little bit more about agriculture in general. And gardens are certainly one way for, for kids to do that. 
We also see um, there was a study that actually the deputy secretary was involved in in her former life as a college um, or as a university professor, um, showing that kids who are engaged in garden-based learning um, not only are willing to try new vegetables, um, but also actually increase their consumption of vegetables. So. Garden-based learning is a really important component of um, establishing healthy eating patterns as well as learning more about agriculture. Um, we established in 2010 the People's Garden School pilot, which is coordinated by the Food Nutrition Service to develop gardens in high poverty schools. Um, our forest service has programs um, through its urban and community forestry program where they're developing urban orchards um, on vacant properties. And we've also, through um, the community food projects, grant program um, have developed some gardens as well as a um, food security effort. One wonderful example that I love from the Compass is um, the United Methodist Ministries in Nebraska runs what's called their Big Rural Garden Project, um, and they got a, a community food project grant to do this. They now have um, 15 gardens in 11 rural counties, and they've got 600 uh, Nebraskans who are volunteering in these gardens to grow food for food banks for their own consumption um, and to sell at farmers markets. So there's more examples like that in, in the compass, but it's definitely an important component of the work. Do you, do you see a project as um, adding the, these gardens to the compass map? Yeah, that's um, part of, of what we're calling phase two. Um, when we add these additional layers of, um, we've got the people's garden map already online, mm -hmm. and so that's a data layer that we can add to the, the compass as we currently have it. And there are a couple other um, data types that people have asked for. For instance, um, are there, has there been talk, are there plans for adding certified organic growers and facilities? At this point, that's not um, one of the layers that we're planning on adding only because there are organic producers who are selling into all different kinds of markets. So there's certainly uh, an overlap between organic production and local food production um, in that a lot of local food producers, or many, are, are engaged in growing organic. Um, but certainly not all of them are certified organic, and not all organic producers are selling locally. So in an attempt to show what's happening on local and regional food systems, um, we, we aren't going to be including that data layer, but there's certainly a lot of information both in the Compass and on the Know Your Farmer website about um, opportunities in organic agriculture, and, and that's an important part of USDA's work. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a, another question about data, um, are there uh, plans sort of mapping infrastructure, um, meat processing centers, we talked about food hubs, but uh, controlled environment production centers, these, these sorts of infrastructure. Yeah, so we have, and, and again, you can find it in the Compass and on the Know Your Farmer website, um, a great effort that, that was kind of catalyzed under the initiative um, through our Food Safety Inspection Service. They developed a map of small uh, slaughter facilities throughout the country. So if you're a producer looking for a place to process your meat um, because you can't get access to some of the larger processing plants, or if you're a business owner interested in finding out if there's a need, if there's kind of a gap in your region in terms of small-scale processing, you can find that on the map. Um, and that is another data layer that we are hoping to add to the Compass map um, in phase two, which, which should happen sometime in early May. Great. Early May. Good. There was, an, there was a question about the timeline. Um, Regina, I'm just going to read this question. It's, it's excellent. Um, a national conversation is great. Stories can be inspirational. Um, how are some of these positive efforts being highlighted by the presenters now going to influence or impact the myriad policies we have at the federal level in the U.S. that create an uneven playing field that fares, favors industrial scale agriculture? Um, and how are the conversations being referred to uh, going on to be addressed and act, acted upon? That is a great question. Um, so he, USDA has, there, there are um, certain things that we can work on and talk about, and there are things that we 
really don't have a lot of control over. And one of those things is um, legislation. Congress writes the Farm Bill. Congress um, is the, the place where those decisions get made. And our job as USDA is really to enact those policies and to try to do it as best we possibly can. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that the 2008 Farm Bill was really um, the catalyst for opening up a lot of opportunities for USDA to do more work on local and regional foods. So um, I would encourage folks, if you're interested in um, communicating with your members of Congress, um, you know, that's obviously something that's, that's available to you, um, but it's not something that that USDA really plays a role in because our role is to carry out the programs. Um, Megan is drowning in alphabet soup. Uh, she asks, under the projects by programming in the map, is there somewhere we can learn what all the acronyms mean? Yes. Um, so at some point, hopefully in phase two, we actually want to write what those acronyms mean. This was one of those like last minute realizations that no one had um, had spelled out the acronyms on the map and we needed to go live and so that's what we have right now. Um, in the glossary, it, which um, you can download from the, the paragraph just above the map on the page that I showed you, there is a description of what all those acronyms mean. Um, and also in the compass, um, you can it, it, it mentions when it talks about a program, it does not ever use an acronym. And so we were attempting to get away from the alphabet soup and, and unfortunately missed this one, but it will be remedied shortly. Excellent. Teresa asks, are there programs that address food access that do not feature an EBT or WIC approach? The answer is absolutely. In fact, there's a whole section in the Compass that has to do with healthy food access. Um, and while SNAP and EBT at Farmers Markets is a huge part of it, that's not the only thing. There are tons and tons and tons of different projects going on um, around the country, whether it be mobile markets, whether it be um, community gardens, whether it be farmer training to get more vendors, um, whether it be, I mean, actually a project I'm thinking of right now was uh, building a grocery store in um, a, a underserved area in Hartford. There's a program with Eastern Market in Detroit that has to do with um, making more food available in lower income areas. So I would really recommend just plunging into that healthy food access chapter of the Compass and there's um, a, imagination will go wild. <laughs> Where do you see higher education institutions fitting into the Farm to School initiatives? I can speak to that, um, and that's a great question. I think they're a very, very important piece of the puzzle. There is certainly a lot going on with Farm to School and a lot of emphasis on um, K through 12. Uh, and actually, I should just mention that um, we will soon have a grant program available for Farm to School that um, was part of the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act. So there will be, for those of you interested in the K through 12 piece, there will be a funding availability announcement later this spring um, so that schools can apply before the school year ends. Um, but in terms of Farm to Institution more generally and specifically the university piece, um, there's definitely a lot of interest here in thinking about those opportunities. Um, there are a couple examples in the compass related to farm to institution. Um, the specialty crop block grant program, which is run through our agricultural marketing service, um, and you actually apply to the State Departments of Agriculture for those. Um, they have funded a number of farm to university initiatives. I remember there was one in Oklahoma um, and another one in Ohio that were really focused on universities. Um, so there are certainly funds available for that. Um, and there's also I would say infrastructure development programs that can help the universities um, access more of that food. So, you know, food hubs and other aggregation um, hubs are a great way of creating more volume, as many of you know, um, in order to sell to larger institutions. Um, there's also distribution assistance that we've provided. Um, one example is our community facilities program run, run through rural development has funded a number of refrigerated trucks for producers to be able to get their products to institutions. Um, and so these are all things that can benefit any kind of institution, not just K through 12 schools. Um, but I, I would again recommend the Farm to Institution section of the Compass will have um, some more information about that. Great. Laura was wondering how uh, we can support local regional farmers reporting for the 2012 Ag Census and asks if Know Your Farmer will play a role in the census. 
Laura, you are my hero right now. Actually, the answer is yes. Uh, there is a question on the Ag Census this year, first time ever, that gets to uh, local foods. And it's, and it's simply because of the research uh, subcommittee on, from the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative that realized that USDA actually didn't um, have enough data on these uh, relationship between the ag census and how local markets were playing in that. So the question was written. The question is on there. The ag census is out. Um, and we encourage everyone who is um, applicable to fill out that, that census to do so. All right, last couple questions. Um, Martin notices that there's very little information for uh, Kentucky high tunnels, for example. He says he knows that there are farmers who have received these re resources and uh, wonders uh, why they're not listed. A good question, and there are a few possible answers to it. Um, the high tunnels, we didn't list by producer address. We, we didn't want to share that information publicly, and so um, they're listed at the zip code level. So you won't be able to, if you look at Kentucky and you see there are areas that are shaded green, um, that's the indication that there are high tunnels in that area, but you won't have um, access to specific information about it. Um, so that's one possibility. Another possibility is that they were funded through an entity other than USDA, or the producers simply built them on their own. Um, right now, what's on the map is just things that USDA has supported. Um, so that could be another reason. Or the third reason, um, most likely not with high tunnels because that was a um, database that we downloaded directly from the Natural Resources Conservation Service. So I, I think it does include all of the ones that we funded for the last couple of years. Um, but with other projects where we were sorting through databases that included a lot of other things beyond local and regional food and trying to pick out the ones that were relevant, we could have missed something. Um, so again, if you think that there are projects that should be included that were funded by USDA in the last three years that aren't on the map, um, do email um, either our, our direct emails, which you have on the screen, or knowyourfarmer at usda.gov, and let us know, and we will do our best to remedy that. Um, an another question about phase two, is there or will there be a way to link in various local food systems and their sites directly? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure. Um, th there's, a <laughs> there's a question about um, l linking uh, local food systems and, and their websites directly into the, the Compass map. So, OK, so to answer that question, if um, currently, um, if there is a project out there that has been funded by USDA that is on the map and we were able to find a website for it, that should be part of the uh, information box that pops up in relation to that dot on the map. If there is an organization out there who is working in local and regional food systems um, that is not on the map because right now they're not part of USDA's funding pool or they're not included in phase two for because they're not part of their data sets for whatever reason, um, that's something that we're working on later. And um, we're, that's still in development of how that's going to work out. But I will say that there are lots of organizations out there that are looking at the technology and looking at the data and are interested in collecting that kind of information. And again, I'll just add, um, I mentioned you can download all the data. And our hope is that people um, who are able to do this, because at this point USDA can't, um, we may in the future. But if you are interested in downloading the data and creating your own maps at a community or a regional level to layer on those, those um, data layers that we haven't captured, that's going to be a wonderful project and one that we hope uh, folks will do around the country. Um, all right. Well, we are we are out of time. There, there are uh, several fantastic questions that I'm uh, sorry that we weren't able to to address. Um, but um, I, I really want to thank Eleanor and Wendy. You did a fantastic job, and and clearly the USDA is committed to supporting thriving local and regional food systems. The Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food in initiative has been very successful in connecting the good work across the different sections of the USDA. And to our audience, I would encourage you to uh, send your feedback stories and your information to that knowyourfarmer at usda.gov email address uh, to keep the conversation going.
Um, I, this webinar is being recorded and it will be archived on our site along with nearly three dozen other webinars we've done in the past. Feel free to point others who you think would have liked to have heard this panel uh, there uh, and feel free to take some professional development time yourself and dig through our excellent archives. Uh, visit ngfn.org slash webinars. This webinar should be up within a few business days and our webinars are organized into topics so if you look in the left hand right uh, left hand navigation area you can dig into whatever topics interest you. We offer our NGFN webinars on the third Thursday of each month. Uh, you, you may notice that this is the second Thursday of March. This is a, a bonus webinar. We wanted to make sure we got the, this Compass information out as soon as possible. Um, sign up links are always at ngfn.org slash webinars. Next week we set our sights uh, on getting more capital into your good food business. Michael Schumann will give us a dozen ideas on how to tap into the many willing but usually unavailable investors right in your backyard. Looking for creative ways to raise capital? Tune in on the Ides of March. Um, if you want, you can sign up for this webinar on the post-webinar survey. There's a question. Uh, we will make sure you get automatically registered for that one. In April, we are taking the month off, but we're putting together a fascinating series for May through into the fall. So remember the easy way, easiest way to make sure you hear about our upcoming webinars and our other Wallace Center activities is to sign up for our mailing lists. And the easiest way to do that is to ask us to add you on the survey that should pop up at when this webinar ends. I do want to let you know about three other Wallace Center websites. This first one was uh, mentioned during, during the webinar, foodhub.info, that's .info, not .com or .org, is a food hub hub of information. There's research, case studies, a map of the many food hubs across the country, which we'll soon be updating, even links to TA providers with experience in aggregation in distribution. If you are a TA provider or consultant on this call, you should take some time to create or update your profile on ngfn.org. This is becoming an established place for those in need of assistance to find their help, so you want to be listed there. There are over 180 individuals and organizations, and that number is growing. Also on foodhub.info, there's a link to the excellent uh, USDA AMS website on food hubs. QFED.org is our site for the Healthy Urban Food Enterprise Development Center run by the Wallace Center. This program and website is focused on increasing access to food to underserved communities using market-based solutions. On the site, you'll find a description of the initiative, grantee profiles, and photos, and a library of some of the best food access resources. If you have a resource you'd like to share, let us know. You can email us at contact.ngfn.org or hufed at winrock.org. And foodshedguide.org is our site for producers wanting to adapt to the changing food business landscape. We have instructive text and case studies with an emphasis on how to have a viable business in a food value chain. Learn about, for instance, factors to consider when deciding on legal status, such as an LLC or a C Corp. Visit foodshedguide.org for more. You can find the NGFN on YouTube, on Twitter, and on our website, ngfn.org. I'd like to encourage you to add your name, interests, and your bio and other information to our growing database of people, organizations, and funders, increasing your ability to connect to people within your regions and nationally. This is all part of the NGFN acting as a connector. Look for the database link on the resources section of our site. And again, if you haven't already, sign up for our email updates. There's a link on the ngfn.org homepage or let us know in the post webinar survey and we'll sign you up. Please contact us at any time. Our email address is there on the screen, contact at ngfn.org. The NGFN would like to thank you for your time today. Once again, please fill out that survey. Uh, it'll take just a moment and this concludes the webinar. Thanks, Jeff. Great, have a great day, y'all.